Hey there, Postal here. So today we're going to be looking at a game submitted to me by Goulash. Um, excellent end score for himself. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we are on uh, Surprise Effect on Asian Border Map. And tier 6 battle, let's see what we can do here. Doing a little loop to do to start off the battle. Um, for me, I think I would have headed to the center to start off the battle, although it does look like there's enough people going to the center. I can understand why going um, somewhere else would be an option. Um, but I also look at the enemy team and... I say, well, you know, they've got, well, they've got a specialized XP-44, which is kind of an underrated multi-role plane. Um, P-51A, uh, we need to watch out for, for that. Uh, it kind of fits this bracket. Um, so I would think going for the center might be the better long-term bet, but I could understand why going for this sector. Uh, being a replay, uh, using the World of Warplane replay files, obviously all the aiming is not going to be spot on <clears throat> as far as the replay is concerned, but obviously he's actually hitting those shots. I'm um, doing a great job of figuring out what the, uh, the best plane to attack is. Uh, always a good thing. So, the enemy team's already gotten two sectors in the time frame it took for us to just get you know, to our sector here. We have gotten the airbase at this point, but you can tell that the um, you know, the top three um, players on the enemy team are a GA and the humans, so uh, we need to be aware of that, and if they've got decent ground attack planes, we uh, want to make sure that we prioritize them. I like to think that our team's going to get the center any time now, any time now, maybe not. We've all had games where you think that the sector's going to fall or be flipped, and it just doesn't happen. Um, kind of taking the steps here to, um, to intercept these guys that are coming into the center. Um, but one thing that I would um, recommend to anybody is utilize the F4. Uh, but what is the F4 button? Well, what that can do, or the F2, um, is it can prioritize the sector for your friendlies. So when you're in a fighter like this, great job um, by Goulash there of, of noticing the XP44 coming in, and making sure that he w he was avoiding um, you know, becoming a priority, and he he made the XP44 dead because he made him the priority. <coughs> But anyway, um, something that I've noticed that Goulash didn't do in this battle, and I don't know if he just doesn't do it or didn't do it in this particular battle, uh, but would be to... Man, that was close. <coughs> would be to set a priority for the enemy team. So what does that mean? So right now, you're in a light fighter. You can't go over and flip a mining facility very easily. At least you can't flip one that's already red. Um, because you can't kill any planes that are there. If you look over there, there's nobody over in the red zone. Nobody's flipping it, and there's nobody that you can kill to, to get it flipped. What you could do, though, is go over here and send your friendlies to that sector. Um, that's really all you can do. But by not making that one a priority, uh, that mining facility is just sitting there gaining points. And when you're in a fighter, when you're going against mining facilities, double mining facilities in this kind of situation, it's important that your friendlies are going to the right sector. Um, it's pretty terrible that we've gotten the center sector here. The comm center is sending bombers to the airbase. Thanks a lot. Does no, it's of no use in this battle. We need those bombers to be going into the mining facility. Um, and see, right now I think Goulash is, is a little distracted. Um, I don't know if that's the right word choice for it, but he's going for his F4U1, which may not be the best use of his um, his talents. He's a very good fighter pilot, but what I would be doing in this situation is 
maybe not necessarily focusing on defending this center section as much. Um, we've got other planes that are, they can defend. What I would be doing is trying to get um, that one airbase over here taken as quickly as possible. Well, why would I want to do that though? Well, I would want to flip it so that that way our bomber squadron that's coming in here... Um, where are they at? Oh, they're there and they're over here dropping bombs. I would want those bombers to stop bombing that useless sector. <clears throat> it's useless to us, it's helpful to the enemy. Get, if we flip it, those bombers will stop going for that sector, and we can have them focus on something more important. Um, right now we're helping defend the sector, the center, but you don't need the center to be at 100% to be defended. Um, if we were able to get this sector sooner, the bombs, the bombers would stop going for it, and on top of that, the double whammy, it would have had um, saved this mining facility a little bit longer because we wouldn't have had all the enemy um, attacking planes going towards it. So unfortunately now we're, we're stuck in this zone without a lot of help and Gulash has been doing awesome at keeping his hit points available throughout this battle but now he's got a he's forced to um, get himself stuck in to a situation that he might not necessarily want to get stuck into as far as self-preservation is concerned. Uh, they've got two mining facilities. We need to get some mining facilities taken care of very quickly. And again, if we were able to, to use those F2, F4 buttons to be able to um, send our friendlies to those sectors, we might be able to get them to start flipping sectors sooner. Okay, we've got that, uh, that far mining facility finally back. That's perfect. Um, I would be calling in my friendlies to get that mining facility that's right near us. Especially since we are we have this spawn point, we can have them all spawning and going in there. Um, and unfortunately, we're in a dogfight with this P-51A. P-39 is not the uh, most maneuverable plane, but it's more maneuverable than a P-51A. Um, now we're gonna have to hit and run because now we've got two humans, and we need to to make sure that we're moving at all times, so that you know when you're on 21 hit points, you need to make sure you're you're not taking any hits. So. Being as cautious as as is prudent, uh, but still being aggressive enough to be able to um, actually get these guys. So P-51A is now in sight. Engine knocked out. He's on fire. He's going to be dead soon. Soon, soon, soon. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's always those moments when you really need to kill people, um, knock them out of the game, that um, the guns tend to miss. So we've got him taken care of. Let's go ahead and get down to this multi-roll. Um, it's Antler again. Pull up, buddy. Ah, knocked him out, set him on fire. We've got another uh, right here. But unfortunately, we're just so far behind on the points that unless we um, get air supremacy... Ooh, I doubt he wanted to do that. Unless we get air supremacy, we're not going to be able to catch up. And so, you know, this is going to be a loss, unfortunately. And it wasn't a loss because of anything specifically done by Goulash. He's got a whole team, right? Um, and he was doing, he was doing what he thought was best at the time. Defending the center is definitely, you know, I, I understand why you want to defend the center, but there's there's over defending as well. I mean, unfortunately, this is a defeat. Uh, you know, Akamatsu got the Winged Legend, fifteen thousand personal points. Um, let's go back and, and take a look at some of the other stats. All right, so clearly not the outcome that uh, that he wanted, and. You know, what what could we have done in this situation? I'm sure we've all had these battles. I've had these battles for sure. Um, where, you know, you have an awesome game personally, but the end result isn't nearly what you wanted it to be. I mean, look at the, the personal points for each team, even. You look at each team and you go, well, all of our humans were better than their entire enemy team, and yet we lost, and, and you know, kind of substantially lost. Well, why was that? How did the enemy team win? Um, so I take a step back and I say, well, the enemy team won simply because they outcapped us. Well, what led to them outcapping us? Well, they owned the mining facilities. Um, they owned them early and they owned them more often than we did. So for future situations like this, um, I would want to be mindful of that. I mentioned in the game that you know I'd be sending, sending my colleagues to those facilities I can't do anything about. I'm in a light fighter. I can't go flipping mining facilities, but I can send my GAs, I can send my bombers, multi-rolls and heavies that might have that ability to go there. 
if I see that there's enemy aircraft in a mining facility, well, I can get capture points by destroying those enemy aircraft, but that wasn't going to happen in this game. And there's one other situation, and I've done, again, I've done this in the past before. Heck, I'm probably going to do it in the future. But I try to be mindful so I can try to change, and that is, I don't need to 100% own a sector to still own the sector. Does that make sense? So in that, that crucial middle part of the game, um, Goulash stayed in the center to 100% own that comm center. And I understand that the comm center is the most important um, sector on this particular map, but would it have made a difference if he only 50% owned it, but still owned it, right? Um, sometimes you've got to take a chance. You've got to just trust your allies to be able to defend a sector or do something. Um, you can't do it all. And so my suggestion would be, in the future, leave the comm center and get that, that one airbase to the south. That would have stopped them from spawning to that airbase. It would have also, um, more importantly to me, get my bombing uh, run to start bombing something more important. So if we get that airbase, the um, bombers will start attacking a mining facility, hopefully, or maybe some other sector. It doesn't matter. We're gaining another sector. Um, and it'll stop them from spawning. It might have even saved us from losing that mining facility um, to the south. But even if we had lost the mining facility, at least we'd be able to respawn towards that airbase and, and maybe get to the mining facility. I don't know. Is it 100% uh, foolproof way? No, but I, th I think that would have been the best tactic at that point. Instead of getting further away from where the bombing run was ending up uh, by going north, I would have headed south and maybe, maybe been able to dictate a, a better outcome. Also in battles like this, sometimes it's just holding on until the squall line comes, and then you can start knocking out planes that are on the enemy team that are making an impact, and they're not continually spawning back, spawning back, spawning back. You know, this game had lasted another two minutes, minute and a half even, Goulash and, and his um, friends here would have pretty easily knocked out the entirety of the enemy team they were consistently doing that throughout the battle. So, again, getting holding on to those mining facilities, maybe sending people over to that mining facility early on, things of that nature, I tend to be mindful of it. I'd, I always complain about um, air supremacies, uh, but it, it matters what your what your goal is. Is your goal to get a higher percentage? Well, then air supremacy is not a bad thing. You might not get the best personal points out of it, but at least you're getting the win. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to find that balance. Obviously, an excellent game by Goulash. I'm not knocking him by any means. Um, but it, when he sent me the email, um, you know, he said he said uh, you know they lost, and he, he um, you know wasn't sure what he could have done to to do his job better. In the game, it's hard to like take a step back and think of that, right? In the game, you've got 700 different things going on, and you're like, oh my god, I got these planes coming in, I got to knock out these GAs, I got these other planes coming in, and you're just trying to be on top of everything. Sometimes taking a deep breath and saying, wait a minute, is this going to get me the victory, or is this just going to get me the sector? Um, and sometimes you need to, sometimes you need to, to determine that. There's been times where getting that sector, I know what, get, holding on to one sector will get me the win. There's been times I've sacrificed myself to either defend a sector or sacrifice myself to kill that one plane in front of me because I know it'll get the sector even though I'm going to die two seconds after it. Um, you know, sometimes you need to take that, um, make that decision on what's going to be the best outcome for the overall battle rather than just for that particular sector. Um, and... I think that might have been the difference on this game. But an excellent game either way. Again, not, I'm not knocking Goulash by any means. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've um, had games similar to this or games where I've had less personal points um, uh, but still done something like this to where we, were, uh, we might have been able to win but um, you know, stuck in one sector kind of thing. So Anyway, I hope you appreciate my perspective on it. Um, I put Goulash's link um, to his YouTube uh, channel down below. A again, an excellent pilot. If you run into him, uh, know who you're getting uh, into a gunfight with because uh, he will uh, he will definitely uh, make life hard for you. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoy my perspective on this replay, and I hope you have a great day.